Hey, how are you doing? Sean here from Lawn Right. So, I'm going to give you seven tips on February lawn care that would really help you out and keep your lawn in a reasonable sort of condition. Plus, I'm going to talk about why 10.30 is a magic number at this time of year. Okay, so what are we talking about here? 10.30. Well, I'm just referring to the time. So, at the moment, it's a frosty day, as you can see from the lawn there. It's frosty and the ground is hard. So there's different types of frost, in my opinion. You've got a really deep, hard frost where the ground is just rock hard and solid. You can't do much about it. So you've got to wait. And then there's like a very light frost. Light frost are where the ground is nice and soft and it's more like a dew. Um, when it's like that and it feels nice and soft, you can go on the grass a bit sooner, but I'm still waiting until it's lifted a little bit. So over the years, over the 20 odd years I've been treating lawns, I've come to realise that around about half past 10 in the morning, most lawns are at a point where you can think about going on. If it's in the sun, you should be fine to go on at half past 10. If it's in the shade, tread with caution. Just get your foot and just put your foot there on the ground and just feel. And that is still rock hard, but we're only at about 9.45 at the moment. So I'm going to take up the garden. You can just have a look there. Top of the garden, we've got sunlight. Now, because we're not even at half past 10 yet, we'll go and have a look. And then I'm going to give you these seven February lawn tips. So we're in the sun now. I can feel it on the back of my head. You can still see that frost on there. And as you get up to this piece up here, the, um, the surface frost is gone. But, the ground is still rock hard. So this is why you've got to keep off. Basically, half past ten is the time things start, and it's the time when you can start to get things and look at things and doing things on your lawn. So let's look at these seven tips, things you've got to do for February to keep your lawn nice. Okay, so, first thing you want to be doing, really, is thinking about servicing your machines. Now, your machines would have had plenty of use on them right through last year. So, it's always worth servicing them every year. We're just talking about a simple oil change, filter change, and uh, a new spark plug if required. And just a good look round, make sure everything's in good working order. Now, the second tip is to make sure that your blades are nice and sharp. Your mower blades, your scarifier blades, if you've got a Holotine aerator machine, make sure your tines are nice and sharp and clean and good and ready to go. Um, even if you've got hand tools, a hand aerator, things like that, just make sure it's all looking good and there's no major problems because quite often little things happen throughout the growing season, like your little, you'll break something off or something and you think, oh, I'll sort it out and you never do. And then you come around to the next year and you take it out and you think, ah, oh, I never got that done. So now's a good time to get these things sorted out, really. So, like I say, the first tip is to service. And the second tip is to get things nice and sharp. Third tip is just to make sure things work. Like all your hand tools, do they actually work? Do they fire up? Um, can they be put to use? Is your rake in good working order? Is your brush working or is the head broke? Uh, little things like that. Um, Continue, this is tip number four, continue to mow on a high setting if it needs it, if it's a dry day. Any other reason, no, don't do it. You want to be keeping off as much as humanly possible, but you don't want it to get too long either. This time of the year, you might want to mow once a month, once every five or six weeks. But it's important not to let it get too long and you certainly don't cut it too short. Um, continue to apply any treatments we're talking about seaweed and iron as we get closer to spring you don't want to be putting on iron that's too heavy because it's going to make things too dark and then when you get into spring you end up with moss which looks really black in your lawn which you want to tackle in the middle of winter for definite i just make it ever so slightly weaker as we get closer to spring because you still want to be putting that goodness in there. You still want to be protecting the plant, but you don't want to be overdoing it. 
because you get to spring your grass is trying to look green and if you've got a moss issue then at that point it doesn't look that good it looks quite unsightly so you're going to be scarifying out anyway if it needs to be but me personally that's what i do so yeah that's that one um tip number six yes and i'm working off a piece of paper because quite often you record a video and you spill everything out your head and you think ah oh, i should have said this should have said that so yeah sometimes i write things down <laughs> So number six, inspect your lawn for issues to fix. What we're talking about? Lawn diseases, winter lawn diseases, like snow mold. You get a pile of snow and if you leave it, it's the perfect breeding ground for diseases to create themselves in that nice warm sort of environment there. You know, it's sweating basically because it's under all the snow and it's sweating. Can't do its normal thing. It can't come up and into the air. The grass can't breathe, basically. Top and bottom, it can't breathe. Is there thatch in the lawn? Is there compaction in the lawn? Diseases. What are you going to do about it? Well, I'm going to show you all this throughout the year. Guys, if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up for me. It would help me out a lot. And um, I'd love it if you'd subscribe. It did mean a lot to me, um, as it would to every other YouTuber that asked you to. Anyway, it is what it is. If you like my stuff, I hope you stick around, guys. Um, so if it's compacted, you'll need to aerate it. And the basics are with a fork. It's not the most ideal, but it's better than nothing because you're still pushing soil further down with a fork. Holotine aeration is better because it relieves compaction in the ground and it allows aerating nutrients to get down to where it needs to be. And it allows the roots to grow into those spaces as well, making it a stronger, healthier, healthier plant. There's lots you can do. I can't wait to show you all of this, to be honest with you. Scarifying, it's gotta be done every year, guys. Same with the aeration, it's gotta be done. Um, some years, it's only a light scarifier. Some years, you might have to do a bit more. Some years, it's just a bit of a tickle through. You need to keep that uh, thatch level down. Tiny bit of thatch is fine. Too much thatch is not fine. No thatch is okay, as long as you water but a tiny bit of thatch retains a bit of moisture. Just getting that fine balance. And what else have I got to say? Um, tip number seven, buy your materials. Get yourself ready, get yourself prepared. What sort of things are you gonna need? Um, top dressings, fertilizers, composts, weed killers, yeah? Get yourself ready, get yourself prepped, and then you are ready to go, all your machines are ready, you're ready to get your lawn looking in the best possible shape it can. Guys, enjoy these tips. See you on the next one.